and welcome to Design Tip of the Week from yesimadesigner.com. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to talk about reflections. So how to create or how to use already existing reflections on photographs of products. So first I'm going to show you a very simple example where we have a square shape and uh, it has a flat bottom so that's very easy to create a reflection from but then second example will be a little bit more complicated this product has a round shape so at the bottom it's round so it's a little bit more complex how to create the reflection for that and then we also have an example here where we already have an existing reflection but uh, let's say we want to put this product on a different colored background and then how can we use this already existing reflection so let me go back to the first example and first of all let me show you how to get rid of the background and separate the object itself from the background when you have only one color in the background like in this case it's very easy to use the magic wand and um, by using the tolerance set to 32 which is the default setting you only need to click on the background because the background has one color, Magic One will very easily detect the edges and stop and not selecting the product itself. So now that we selected the background, what we can do is to go to the select menu and choose inverse. You can also use command shift I or control shift I uh, as a keyboard shortcut for this. Now that we inverted the selection, we actually have the product selected. So once you have the product selected you can turn your selection into a mask and to turn it into a mask you just simply need to click on the add a mask option here at the bottom so if I click on that that will separate the object from its background basically we are hiding the background now with the mask we can always alt click on the mask just to see what happened white shows black hides in the masks whenever you work in Photoshop so now I alt click on the mask again the little thumbnail here so I can see the actual product okay now we can create another background a completely separate layer so I'm going to click on the new layer icon and I'm going to drag this layer below the product layer and I'm going to fill this layer in with a color so I just choose edit fill and then we can choose the foreground color for example which is like a pink color let's just choose that and you can see it's nicely filled in with that color now so if I want I can even have like a gradient on the actual background by double clicking on this layer here and uh, accessing the layer style dialog box I can choose gradient overlay you can see we already have a gradient in the background but we can change the blend mode of this to let's say multiply and reduce the opacity we can even reverse uh, the gradient itself so it will be a little bit darker on the top and a bit brighter at the bottom that's quite nice effect as well it's subtle but that's all you need so if I click on OK we can accept this gradient overlay layer style on our background layer I'm just going to call this back and I'm going to call this product it's good to get used to naming your layers because otherwise once you have lo lots of layers and they're not named you might find it difficult to <laughs> work out what's uh, going on in your layers panel so now comes the actual interesting part the reflection creation of the reflection all you need to do is to duplicate your layer so how do you do that well if you press command J that will create a quick duplicate immediately that's by the way under layer new and layer via copy that's the command so we have the product copy but I'm going to call this a reflection and I'm going to drag it below the original product layer now I go to edit transform and I choose flip vertical so once I select that you can see our layer is flipped vertically so now all I need to do is to drag this further down if you want to make sure you don't move left and right you can hold down shift while you are using the move tool and then find a point where it's nicely aligned to the object above it something like that and then we can now reduce the opacity of this layer you can click here on the word opacity and drag it down 
just keep an eye on the actual canvas and see how strong the reflection you want to be something like 30 percent in my case i think is enough but that's not all because i would like to also have like a fall off um, so I would like to have a gradual disappearance on the uh, reflection from the actual product further down. So here it will be 30% and then I would like to have like a gradient that it fades out nicely further down. Because that's exactly how it would look like on a real uh, reflecting surface like glass or something. It's always good to study real products and light and reflections um, around yourself just get a glass uh, table and put something on it and see how the reflection works. So once we have all this set up, what we need is another additional layer mask on this reflection layer. But we can't have two layer masks in uh, one layer. The only way to do that is to group it first. So if I press Control or Command G, that will put this reflection layer in a group. And we can call this group as well reflection, like that. And now I can add another mask on the actual group in which I have the reflection layer. So I'm going to click on the mask icon. And now we can use the gradient tool set to black and white linear gradient. And I can start hiding the actual object from bottom to top, something like this. You can see how nicely now it fades out. So it has that um, gradual fading effect. And I can always check without uh, this gradient. If I shift click on the mask on the layer group, I can see before. And if I shift click again, I can see after. Again, we can also turn off the gradient overlay in the background. So everything is completely non-destructive. And we can actually put now the product and the reflection also in a group. So Command or Control G again. And we can call this again the product with reflection or something like that and then if i use the move tool you can see i can move this around now the only problem is that this part wasn't uh, visible in the canvas when i did all these masking effects so to make sure that it works perfectly uh, when you create the reflection also make sure your canvas is big enough to see the whole reflection because once you move it around, you can see it might cause a problem. So that's the way to work when the reflection, the creation of the reflection is easy. But this is the workflow that I'm going to do in the other examples as well. So that's what you really need to remember, my layer structure. That's the most important thing. So first isolating the object from its background and create a background layer, then duplicating the product and flip it uh, vertically and then add this uh, reflection gradient mask on it. So once you have a setup like this, it's very easy to work with the product and its reflection together. But let's have a look at this other product here. Well, first of all, there's two issues with this. One is that if I use the magic wand and I click on the white background, well, it's going to select some parts of the product as well because the product is very bright. Uh, it's almost similar to the background itself. So in these cases, I have to reduce the tolerance. Let's go down to 12 and I'm going to retry making a selection. Now it did a much better job. So let's carry on, create the mask. If you create the mask and you forget to invert your selection first, don't worry, because you can press Command I or Control I while the mask is selected and that will invert the colors of the mask, which creates almost exactly the same effect as inverting the selection first and then creating the mask. So learning from my previous uh, mistake, I'm going to extend my canvas. And for that, again, another very useful technique, use the crop tool and just drag the bottom of your canvas further down, something like that. So now we have a good big canvas in which we can work. And I'm going to call this layer just like before product. So let me just rename it to product. And I'm going to create another layer. Once again, another keyboard shortcut for you. If you want to create a new layer, but not above, but below the actual selected layer, just hold down command or control and click on the create new layer icon. 
and that will place it directly below the selected layer and not above. Again, just a small time saver. I'm going to call it back. Another time saver, if you know that you want to fill in a layer or a selection with your foreground or background color, you don't have to go to Edit Fill. You can also press Alt Backspace. Alt or Option Backspace will fill in the selected layer or the selection with your foreground color and Control or Command Backspace would fill in with the background color. That's white in my case while uh, the foreground color is pink. In this case I'm going to use a little bit different color just so we can see it better what's happening with our reflection. So as you can see I changed my foreground color and then I pressed Alt Backspace. Okay, so now we have the object isolated. We can create the duplicate version and I'm going to call that reflection and move it below and go to edit, transform and flip vertical. If you need to do this several times, I mean a lot of products, you have to do the same thing, then uh, it might be useful to save an action for these couple of steps. So now we can see the problem here that reflection should never be like this okay so that's obviously a fake reflection so you have to make sure that it's lined up more closer to the object and in this case it's quite easy you just simply have to uh, line it up like this and then it already looks good it looks more realistic to how the actual reflection would look like. In some cases you might need to maybe warp the object using free transform and using the warp features you can actually bend the edges around but it's quite difficult so you might need to be a bit clever if the actual product is more complicated at the bottom. So in my case I'm just going to do something like this so I still would like to see that little curve there at the bottom of the object and also this line is nicely uh, following the reflection as well. So it looks quite realistic. Now we just have to add a group. So I press Ctrl or Command G and then I'm going to add the mask on that. Using the gradient tool I'm going to create the gradient and we can still reduce the opacity as well if we want to. So there you go, we are ready and now we can move this product together. If I group everything together, let's call this second product and using the move tool you can see we can move the actual product with its reflection together. Now let me show you also another interesting thing. What if I want to uh, color some parts of this uh, uh, product packaging. Let's say I'm designing the product packaging and I would like to make sure that the reflection will update with the changes that I do on the product. For that actually you have to go back to the stage where you don't have any reflection and in the beginning when you create the reflection you have to turn your product layer into a smart object first of all. So right click convert to smart object. There you go. Now I can do the duplicate. And the good thing about smart objects is that they are going to be connected. So they will share the same source. So if I change one of them, the other one will update. So let's do the same thing once again. I'm going to go to edit, transform, flip vertical, and drag it down where we had it previously, something like that. And then we can reduce its opacity and add also a mask on it. In this case, I didn't have to create a group because the original mask that I did to, uh, for isolating it from its background is now wrapped inside the actual smart object. So it's inside the smart object's source. So now I can use the gradient tool and create the gradient. Let me do a little bit more visible uh, reflection here just so we can see when I update the product itself. So I'm happy with this. I'm just going to zoom a little bit closer so you can see what's happening. If I double click on the product uh, layers icon or thumbnail and you can either double click on this or the one below it, the reflection as well, they will lead to the same uh, smart object source. So this is the source of my smart object and let's say I would like to add a text or something on it, maybe like a line here which will be colored. 
So I'm just going to do a very simple selection on a new layer. I'm going to create an elliptical selection somewhere here in the middle. Let's say this should be the same color as the uh, color on the top. Uh, so I use my brush tool, Alt click on this, and then Alt backspace to fill in that selection something like that and then if I want to see how it looks I can go to file save close this document and you can see it already updated not only on the actual object but also on its reflection so that is a very useful technique if you use smart objects before you actually create the reflection then both the product and its reflection will be affected with all the changes that you do, you do inside the smart object okay and last but not least let me go to an example where we already have a reflection and we just would like to change the background color for example well for this instance I would use the quick selection tool instead of the magic wand tool and just draw around the object including its reflection as well. Then I'm going to invert the selection, so inverse and save a mask for this. You might say that, okay, that's great, but we lost uh, the original the reflection. Well, don't worry about that. We can always duplicate this and I can invert the mask. So for this layer, I will invert the mask. So the only thing we see is actually the reflection. And then I'm going to also uh, create another group on this layer and make a selection, just a rough selection of this part here at the bottom, probably using the rectangle tool, something like that. And I'm going to click on the mask icon again. So now, as you can see, we have a layer for the product, which can be on the top and I can also call it product. Uh, product. And I can call this one here reflection. Again, I'm using two masks. The original one is what I used for the product as well. And then we have a second mask which focuses on the area where we can see the reflection. So now we can create a new uh, layer and I'm just going to fill that in with a different color like this orange color. And now the only thing you have to do after this is to change the blend mode of the whole group that you use for the reflection to multiply. So once you do that, you can see how nicely it works and we can change this color easily. If I press Ctrl or Command U to access the hue saturation adjustment, you can see whatever I color I change the background to, my reflection works perfectly. I can increase, decrease the saturation as well or increase and decrease the lightness of the actual background color. So that's all I wanted to show you in this uh, tutorial. I hope you found it useful and you can use it in your own design projects. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Also, if you want to learn more about design, check out my in-depth online courses on my website, yesimadesigner.com.